good morning to one and all gathering this is vaidehi faculty of computer applications dr enjar educational research institute madurai this is the time to welcome our comparer mrs nitya arun kumar to take away the session thank you thank you ma'am a uh, pleasant morning everybody myself nitya assistant professor faculty of computer applications dr mgr educational and research institute madurai chennai knowledge is like a mobile application where we need to update often the main motto of this faculty development program is to update our knowledge in the end nothing is lost every event has good effects forever as we stepped into the last day of five days faculty development program on value addition on emerging information technologies we would like to share our university video clipping followed up by our department video Dr. M. J. R. Education Institute and Research Institute University.
Thank you, ma'am. Now I like to invite Mr. Ajayan, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Computer Applications, to welcome the gathering. Thank you, Nitya. A very happy good morning, one and all who are connected here in this event. On this occasion, I took the privilege to thank our Chancellor through ACS Shanmugam sir, our beloved President Engineer ACS Arun Kumar sir, Vice Chancellor Dr. Geeta Lakshmi Madam for giving us an opportunity to conduct this five days faculty development program to enrich the faculty knowledge and to strengthen our department. Our university is grade A, NAC accredited, NBA accredited, AICT approved, UGC approved, aimed to be university with a graded autonomy status. Faculty of Computer Application is one of 13 different faculties of our university. Under this faculty, we offer general and different industry collaborated undergraduate courses in BC, postgraduate course MC, and research oriented degree courses MPhil and PhD. With this brief note on us, on behalf of the Faculty of Computer Applications, I welcome the pillars of our department, Dean Dr. P.S. Ramamurthy sir, HOD Dr. Vijivinoth madam, additional HODs Dr. M.S. Josephine madam and Dr. Selvam sir. <clears throat> On behalf of the Faculty of Computer Applications, I welcome our chief guest of today's event, Dr. P. Yagarajan, Professor, Department of Computer Science, Central University of Tamil Nadu, Thiruvar, and to thank him for accepting our invitation. On behalf of the Faculty of Computer Applications, I welcome the event organizers, supporting staffs, other faculty friends, and other staff members of our department. This is the fifth day and the final day of the faculty development program on value addition on emerging technologies. From day one to day five, all the participants are enthusiastically attending all the events. Without the participants, no event will be succeeded. I must welcome all the participants wholeheartedly and thank them to make this event a grand success. And then today's topic is data mining tools. I hope you all will enjoy the session and once again welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to call upon Mr. Sarah Devi, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Computer Applications, to introduce today's star speaker. A very, a very pleasant morning to one and all. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today for the session on data mining tools. Dr. P. Tiagarajan is a professor for the Department of Computer Science, Central University of Tamil Nadu, Tiruvaru, India. Completed his MS from College of Engineering, Gindi, PhD from Pondicherry Central University, and also successfully finished his post doctorate from Department of Atomic Energy, Government of India, Kalpakam. His major research areas are machine learning, cryptography, big data analytics, information security, and Internet of Things. He has published around 40 research papers in top journals like Springer, Elsevier, IEEE, and Nuclear Engineering. He also served as a reviewer for a few reputed journals. He is a founder, head of the Department of Computer Science, CUTN, a nodal officer of the Campus Connect Wi-Fi project, and convener of MHRD Institution Innovation Council of CUTN. To add to, add to his credentials, he has completed three research projects worth Rs. 10.5 lakhs and one implementation project worth Rs. 5.6 crores for CUTN Campus Connect Wi-Fi project. Thank you, ma'am, for your detailed note on today's speaker. Now, I request our today's resource person, Dr. P. Tyagarajan, to take over the session. Sir, please. Um, thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the nice introduction. A very good morning to uh, all the um, faculties who are uh, participating on this FTP. Hope I'm audible and uh, 
hope you are able to see my uh, uh, slides. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I will proceed. So uh, I am uh, from Central University of Tamil Nadu, and uh, for the next one hour, uh, I am going to deliver a lecture on data mining tools. So this is the outline of the webinar. So we're going to discuss uh, what is data mining, types of data, and uh, what is the overall process involved in the data mining, various data mining tools. And among the various data mining tools, we're going to discuss on uh, Vika and uh, Rapid Miner uh, in uh, focus. And uh, we at the end of the session, we're going to compare uh, Vika and Rapid Miner, and we will conclude the session. This is the outline of this webinar. Hope all of you are able to see uh, the slide transition smoothly, right? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK. It's so visible, sir. OK, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, so data mining, you all know, uh, it is nothing but extracting the hidden, uh, valid, and potentially useful patterns from the huge data sets. So data mining is all about uh, discovering unspecs unsuspected, previously no unknown relationship amongst the data. So it is a multidisciplinary skills that uh, uses machine learning, statistics, AI, and database technologies. So the insights derived uh, through this data mining can be used uh, in variety of fields, uh, ranging from marketing, fraud reduction, scientific discovery. Even in medical fields, this data mining plays a very crucial role, especially for uh, the cancer reduction and, uh, and also for the COVID, uh, which is uh, the pandemic in which we are all uh, facing many issues uh, in all walks of life. Even uh, this data mining will also help us to predict how it will be in future and when it will be uh, under control. All things can be done uh, with the help of the data mining. So data mining is also known as uh, the knowledge discovery, uh, knowledge extraction, or data pattern analysis, or information harvesting. These are the different names by which the data mining will be called. So data mining, as you see, uh, we can mine the data from uh, different types of data. So whether it's a text data or the web data, we can do this data mining on the variety of data, some of which uh, have been uh, listed out here. So we can uh, do this data mining on the relation databases, uh, data warehouse, advanced uh, DB, uh, advanced database and information repositories, object-oriented and object-relational uh, databases, transactional and spatial databases, heterogeneous and legacy databases, uh, multimedia and steaming databases, text databases, text mining and web mining. So if we carefully note, almost uh, all formats of data, we can do this data mining. And we can hide, uh, we can extract the meaningful information out of it. So, if you see the the steps involved in the data mining, it ranges from uh, the business understanding to uh, deployment. So, it starts with uh, understanding uh, the particular business. So, data mining will be done for any particular uh, problem. So, before venturing into this uh, data mining, first of all, we have to understand what is that problem is all about. We have to understand the area about the problem. For you're working on the medical data set, cancer data set, then you should know about that particular cancer type. You have to have a thorough study. Unless otherwise, you will not be able to work on this particular data set. So, you should have the business understanding. Then after you have a thorough understanding in the field in which you're going to work on this data mining, you should have a thorough understanding about the data involved in this mining data mining process once you understood the data which in which we are going to mine it you have to prepare the data so preparation in the sense uh, the data will be uh, from any source so there will be some irrelevant data there will be some missing values and uh, so many other uh, uh, irrelevant data will be there so it is up to the data miner who can able to uh, prepare the data for uh, the particular data mining process so data preparation is one of the main uh, steps in the data mining and almost uh, if you see the statistic it says around 60 to 70 percent of the time uh, will be dedicated by the data miners to clean the data for the data preparation task it's a very very important task and uh, as i said 60 to 70 percent of the time for the data mining project will be involved in preparing the data because unless otherwise the data is correct then the inf data is correct we cannot be able to get the meaningful information from the data because data is a foundation from which we are going to derive the meaningful information so we have to be very sure that whatever data we're going for the data mining process it should be very valid so it takes around 60 to 70 percent of the time once the data is ready then uh, we will model the data by many of the data mining algorithms is available and then uh, after modeling the data the results which is uh, out from the model will be evaluated and finally it will be deployed so this is the uh, six step process which is uh, involved in uh, data mining that's uh, uh, all the stages are very binded 
So if you see, uh, there are uh, many, many data mining tools uh, that has been evolved uh, in the history of computer science. So I have taken the five uh, top uh, uh, open source data mining tools. Uh, they are Vika, RapidMiner, R, Python, and Kime. So uh, there are many, of course, as I said, there are many, but these are the very top, mostly used uh, data mining tools. So I have listed all these things. And uh, in this session for the next uh, 50 minutes, we are going to see on um, Beacon Rapid Mare extensively. And R Python, you know, uh, these are the, uh, again, it's an open source programming languages. And, you know, Python is coming up very fastly. And R is especially developed for uh, this data mining and analytics process. And Kime is also an open source tool, which is having an extensive uh, library for data mining. So we will discuss in detail about the weekend rapid miner. So uh, before uh, going uh, to weekend rapid miner, just uh, we look into each of these uh, top five tools uh, in a brief manner. So Vika, it's a Java-based uh, customized tool, which is free to use. So whoever wants to use Vika, uh, they can able to download it at free of cost so that it's not appropriate. It does not belong to any companies or an organization. So it is free and it is built on uh, Java. It has extensive visualization, uh, predictive analysis, and modeling techniques. We want to do clustering, association rules, regression, classifications. Every algorithm uh, which is available in data mining has been incorporated in the Vika. The only thing is that you have to upload the data they had, you have to upload the clean data and you have to select the appropriate algorithms. And if you click uh, apply, then the algorithms will be automatically coded in the VK so that the coded part will be updated on the data and only you can see the results. So it is a very much sophisticated tool. So you need not write any code for algorithms, any standard algorithms, you need not write the code because the code will be inbuilt in this VK tool and uh, it is a GUI application. So only thing is that you have to upload the data and you have to select the appropriate algorithm for the data. After we clip the OK button up on selecting the algorithms, you can able to see the results. So it's a very much sophisticated tools. Because there are standard algorithms which is already built in. Uh, there are many libraries available. So it is not necessary for us to code. Uh, for example, working on decision tree, you need not write a code for the decision tree. You can simply select the decision tree options in the week and you can uh, uh, make them activate on your data. Uh, unless otherwise you are working, uh, unless otherwise uh, you plan to work on uh, the main core algorithm, uh, you need not code this decision tree. Okay. And uh, Rapid Miner, uh, previously it is called as Yale. Now it has renamed as Rapid Miner. It's very, very popular. And it is a, again, it is an open source. Uh, no coding is required. It's a software which has a rich uh, uh, analytics uh, facilities being incorporated in it. Again, like uh, Vika, this uh, Rapid Miner is also written in Java. It incorporates multi-faceted data mining functions. See, as I said, it has data pre-processing, visualization, predictive analysis. And the main advantage of the rapid miner is that it can also be able to interact with other tools. For example, this rapid miner, if you want to in interact with Vika, I can able to do that. This rapid miner, if you want to interact with R, Again, I, I, that uh, that option is available in the Rapid Miner. So this is a very unique feature. Make this Rapid Miner much more popular. So it can easily integrate with the Vika R tool to directly give models and uh, um, give models from scripts written in Farmer two. So this uh, EC compatibility, the other uh, tools like Vika and R make this Rapid Miner a little more uh, having an advantage than the other tools. So our uh, programming tool, uh, as you all know, it is mainly used for uh, the analytics and data mining. This uh, programming is mainly written on C and Froton, and it allows the data miners to write the scripts uh, like a programming language in the platform. So it is may it is used to make a statistical and analytics software for data mining. It supports uh, graphical analysis, both linear and nonlinear modeling, classification, clustering, and time-based data analysis. So if you see again in the R, uh, the, all the standard algorithms are uh, been uh, available in the library. So you did not code. You have to import uh, the appropriate package, and then you have to use the appropriate library in the package. That's all. You, your job is done. It will be done in a matter of uh, three to five lines of the code because everything has been already uh, ready made available ready by this uh, programming tool. Next, uh, Python um, based R engine NTLK. So the Python is a very, very popular open source tool and it's one of the beginners language. Slowly, uh, many of the universities have uh, started removing C and they are uh, venturing into the Python because it's a beginners language and it's very easy to learn. And uh, it's also open source. So it has a very, very powerful features. So whatever uh, you, you name any contemporary field uh, in the computer science, uh, you can name a particular package in that uh, Python forum. For example, now you know uh, computer science is slowly turning towards the deep learning. So 
now we have a package especially uh, for the deep learning in python so whatever uh, contemporary whatever uh, updated uh, research field is being there in computer science we can able to map uh, yeah, packages in the python so what i am trying to say is that the python uh, is being developed by the group of uh, community users who who was a dedicated open source developer they are keeping updated uh, this python uh, now and then so that it can able to meet the user expectations so if you see you look back the history of python it is developed in 1990 um, though it is developed in 1990 still python is able to retain its popularity only because it is keeping updated now and then it is keeping updated it's not an absolute one so whenever things are absolute then we will not look back but uh, the main uh, reason why python is so popular even after uh, around uh, three decades it has been established is that it is meeting the expectations of the researcher so whenever a new field has been coming then this open source developer is contributing the python with that particular library for example as i said we have a library for deep learning also which helps the python more popular among the researchers and of course among the uh, students community too so again uh, this uh, uh, python based orange tool is an open source tool that is written in python which yeah, which is uh, having a, a rich uh, libraries for data analytics uh, text analysis and machine learning features embedded in the visual programming interface so ntlk is uh, also a part of uh, python it's a powerful language processing tool so if you want to do some text analytics then this ntlk will uh, play a major role so this ntlk will contains of uh, consist of data mining machine learning and data scrapping features that can easily uh, be used for um, user customized needs the last uh, tool which is very popular for the data mining is nothing but the kime so this is mainly used for the data pre processing that the data extraction data transformation and loading so the kime is a very very powerful tool with the graphical user interface that shows the networks of data node so this kime is mainly uh, used for uh, financial data analytics it has a modular data pipelining uh, leveraging machine learning and data mining concepts liberally for building business intelligent reports so these are the quick uh, brief uh, introduction about the top uh, data mining tools that has been used by the researchers so among that as i said uh, we are going to see a little elaborately uh, on vika and the rapid miner so we are going to see uh, for the next maybe 20 minutes uh, we'll be going to uh, discuss in detail about the vika so this is what the uh, this is what the major topics we're going to discuss on vika week what is vika and in vika there are three different uh, parts which there in that we are only concentrated on on explorer in the explorer we're going to see how we can pre process data classifying clustering association rules and how we can visualize the data so what is vika actually uh, the expansion of vika is nothing but vika to environment for knowledge analysis so it's a data mining or a machine learning tool which being uh, developed by in the new land um, the department of computer science in the university of waikato so if you know if you want to know what is vika vika is also a bird that is found only in the islands of uh, new land so with this uh, the university of waikato named uh, this uh, software which is being developed uh, by the department of computer science as vika and it has been expanded as waikato environment for knowledge analysis so anyone who want to download and install vika you can uh, go to that uh, university of uh, waikato cs department and you can able to download it and if you see uh, you have uh, different uh, support uh, of the vika for if you want to install in windows uh, mac os linux so we have different versions of uh, vika to be downloaded and appropriately you have to install in the operating system you have to check whether it is 32 bits 64 bits and you have to check whether which os you are going to work based on that you have to choose the uh, download version of vika from the website and you can install it as i said it's an open source so no cost is involved the main features of vika so this vika contains 49 data pre-processing tools it contains 76 classification on recursion algorithms it contains eight clustering algorithms it contains three association rules mining algorithm and it contains 15 attributes of subset evaluators plus 10 search algorithm for future selection these are the things which uh, the vika incorporated within it so if you download the vika you can able to do this many uh, algorithms are readily available in the vika only thing is that you have to uh, use the appropriate uh, uh, data with appropriate algorithms then you can easily get the results by just clicking in the graphical user interface these are the big features that has been incorporated in the vika 
So this is how uh, the Vika will look like when you launch it. So you can see that uh, there are three uh, graphical, us uh, graphical user uh, interface node is nothing but simple CLI. Another is Explorer, Experimenter, and uh, Knowledge Flow. So in this presentation, we are going to discuss in detail about the Explorer, that is exploratory data analysis. And in Experimenter, we have experimental environment. And in the Knowledge Flow, it will uh, mainly concentrate on the new process model inspired interface. So as I said, we are going to discuss only uh, the Explorer part in this week. Up. So the first uh, part in the Explorer is nothing but uh, the pre-processing the data. So pre-processing the data is very, very important, as I said, before uh, selecting the model, this pre-processing has to be done. So if you see where this data can be imported, so the data can be import imported from variety of files into the Vika environment. It can be imported from CSV file. It can be imported from ARFF file. It can be imported from C4 dot file, binary file. It can be imported from the web. It can be imported from the XML file. So we can import the data into this uh, Vika uh, from variety of source files. So even as I said, the data can also be read from the URL. Or if you want to read the data from the relational databases, like SQL databases, of course, it is possible in the Vika. So name any data set available in any uh, environment, like any different file formats. You can able to download the same into the Vika environment. So for doing the pre-processing, Vika also supports these filters. And uh, some of the filters are discretion, normalization, resampling, attribute selection, transformation, and accompanying attributes, and many more. These are the things which is already being available in the Vika. So only thing is that you have to know which filtering mechanism you have to use for the particular algorithm or for the particular data. Only if you have some that knowledge, then you can able to get a successful output from the Vika. For that, you need to have a thorough understanding about the algorithms of data mining. So this is the uh, flat file. So even uh, this uh, Vika deals with the flat files. Whatever data, whatever may be the file format in which you are uploading data, whether the file format may be CSV or the binary, if you use uh, uh, any of the file format, this Vika convert the data set into the flat files. The flat file is nothing but uh, it is, uh, uh, which will be like as I uh, projected over here. It will be having the uh, attribute name and it will contain the value. So this is how uh, the flat files will look like. So Vika will convert uh, any files into this flat file and can deal with it. So as I said, uh, age, so I have listed here two things. One is nothing but attribute age, which, is of, which takes only the uh, numeric value. And, and I have another attribute called sex, which contains uh, nominal attributes. So nominal attributes can generally, uh, generally shuffles between two or three, three types only. So uh, general, uh, gender is always male and female. So it is called as a nominal attributes. So this is the only file. Whatever may be the file format is we can convert it to the flat files and you can uh, deal with it easily. This is this is how this uh, Vika environment uh, are, uh, will be uh, like when you launch it. So it contains of many tabs like pre-processing tab, classify tab, cluster tab, association tab. Uh, I'm just looking uh, at the topmost column. Please look at the topmost column. Uh, select attributes tab and visualize tab. Second, if you look at the second row in this uh, uh, Vika, it contains uh, open file, open URL, open DB. So this second row, it always deals with uh, from where we can import the data, from which of the source file we can going to import the data of the Vika to do the data mining process. As I said, it can read from the file, it can read from the URL from the website, you can read from the DBMS, anything. So name a file, you can, you can open it from the Vika. So the second row deals with importing the data. If you look at the third row, this, as I said, this uh, uh, Vika supports extensively the filter process, which is required for the data pre-processing. Uh, it has a choose button. If you click on the choose button, there are a variety of filters being available in the Vika, and you have to choose the appropriate filter for the data type. Okay, so this is how uh, the Vika will look like. And if you have, if you see the left uh, side, we have an attribute. Whenever you side, whenever you select a data set there is attribute uh, text box which is present on the left side which list uh, the all the column name here so it will uh, in the attributes you can list uh, the, all uh, all the column name in the appropriate data set so that will be listed once the file is open then it, this attribute will list all the columns in the data set and if you see the right hand side we have uh, a name missing value distinct type and unique so it will give the statistics of the data set if I open any data set, the statistics mean what is the maximum value, what is the minimum value, what is the standard deviation. Those all statistics will be listed in the right hand side. Okay. And if you see at the bottom, you have a visualize all. If you click this, it will just give the particular graphical interface of the attributes which you have selected. This is how the Vika GUI will look like. 
for example here i'm going to walk through each and every step so first uh, you have a open file uh, if you click the open file and if you select any data set by default vika will have this iris data set this iris data set is done nothing but a data set which deals with uh, the flower this is an inbuilt data set which is available in all almost all uh, data mining tools so i'm just trying to open that uh, uh default uh, iris data set which is being available in the data mining tool so for that to for that data to be loaded in the week environment i have to open the file and i have to select that appropriate file so that it gets loaded so once i select this iris data set if you see here this iris data set contains five attributes nothing but sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and the class so that as i said in the left hand side whenever you select a data set that data set attributes attribute in the sense the column names will be listed and if you look at the right hand side we have a selected attribute so among the attributes the among the five attributes listed i'm just selecting this uh, sepal length whenever i selecting the sepal length the entire statistics of the sepal length will be displayed on the right hand side column if you look at the right hand side uh, it contains the entire statistics of the sepal length it says that the minimum value of a sepal length is 4.3 and the maximum value of the sepal length is 1.9 the mean of the sepal length is 5.843 and the standard deviation of the sepal length is 0.828 see how nicely it can able to just give a summary of a particular column or summary of a particular attribute in data set just by selecting the particular attribute okay so if you look again again the top of the attributes so it says what data set i have selected so i have selected this iris data set and it says instances 150 it means that there are 150 rows that has being available in this particular data set and attributes five attributes in the sense column name how many column names are available there are five column names available so on pan selecting any of these attributes this the right hand says it will change this minimum maximum mean and standard deviation again if you look at the top it says that uh, there is no missing value in the sense it the, the sepal length has been correctly listed out for all the 150 data so there is no missing values and it says there are distinct 35 values it distinct means among the sepal length there are 35 distinct values there are 150 rows the 150 rows there are 35 distinct values available in the sepal length so this is what uh, uh, the quick summary of uh, the sepal length so see here on just clicking it you can able to get the statistics if this vika tool is not there then imagine all these things we have to do by coding part which will be a very cumbersome job okay and in the bottom uh, you can see uh, the graph uh, which is in, a, in the x axis 4.32 uh, 7.9 which gives uh, the class value so we'll discuss what is the class value in the next slide good next if you see uh, we have now the class and uh, yeah exactly so this class is nothing but the segregation of all these 150 data into two different categories so nothing but all these 150 data will be segregated into three different classes one is nothing but iris setosa another is nothing but iris versicolor and another is nothing but iris virginica so all these 150 data will be split among these three categories okay so if you click uh, yeah, the class attributes then uh, on the right hand side you can see uh, what are the different labels in the class it is be iris setosa iris versicolor and ic virginica and the number of counts of this data set is nothing but setosa 50 versicolor 50 and virginia 50 if you, if you sum up all these three things is nothing but 150 which is equal to the instances which is present in the iris data set so if you look at the graph it says number of classes which is being present in the data set as i said all are equal so all are 50 50 50 okay that is what it is visible see here this entire uh, class and the count will be uh, visualized in the graph so this uh, mining tool will also help us to figure out or classify the classes and we can able to see the distribution in the data set good so this is a very very important visualization tool as i said this graph is again a visualization technique which is clearly portrays how these three classes the three classes which we have discussed is nothing but setosa vesicular and virginica how these three classes have been uh, distributed uh, for a sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width so let us take an examine the topmost uh, graph it is nothing but sepal length before that i like to say that this blue color stands for uh, iris setosa and this uh, red color stands for uh, iris versicolor and uh, this uh, um, light uh, blue we can say uh, light that is stand for iris virginica so each and every color stands for a particular number of classes in this iris data set so the same color holds good here okay so in sepal length it says the sepal length value you just observe the graph which is being listed in the top corner so it says it is nothing but iris setosa 
So in iris et osa, the values of the sepal length varies from 4.3 till it is varies from 6. And if you see uh, the varies of uh, iris versicolor, it varies from uh, around 4.5, it varies to until uh, it is varies from uh, around 7. If you see the third class is nothing but virginica, it varies from uh, around five values, it varies till 1.9. So it just gives a visualization appearance of all these three classes on the sepal length. Okay, so similarly, if you want to know how these values of sepal width has been distributed among the classes, the, the graph C here, this graph says the sepal length value distribution among the three classes. The three classes is nothing but uh, uh, iris uh, setosa, iris vesicular, and iris virginia. Next, the second graph, top second graph is nothing but sepal width. Again, it shows the distribution of uh, sepal width value among the three main classes which has been classified. Again, it, the topmost third graph is say the petal length distribution values in the three different classes. And if you look at the second row first graph, it says the distribution of petal width values among the three different classes. And the last graph says the distribution of records on different classes. So this is how, see, you not write a code, only that you have to select a visualize all. If you select a visualize all on a particular parameter, you can able to get this graph. And it says the distribution of values among the classes. It, it all can be done just by clicking it. You need not write any coding. Only thing is that you have to know which algorithm and which uh, uh, attributes you have to, which filter you have to choose uh, for the pre-processing. So again, uh, this is a slide which shows if you select this petal length uh, attribute. Again, uh, if you see in the right hand side, we can have the minimum value of uh, petal length is one, maximum 6.9, mean is 3.759, and standard deviation is nothing around 1.763. And again, if you see the visualization uh, sector, it contains uh, the petal length, the distribution value of three classes. The three classes, I said, it has been distributed. The petal length value has been distributed for uh, Vesicola, Setosa, and Virginica. The visualization will portray the petal length distribution on the three classes. Okay. Next, we are going to deal with the filter. How, why the filter is required? We'll see this. This filter is highly essential because not all the attributes can be uh, used for a many number of data number of alg algorithms. For example, you want to use the decision tree, then uh, you have to definitely have a discretized numerical attributes. Otherwise, this decision tree will not work. So often, uh, your raw data for data mining is not an ideal for modeling. And you need to prepare or you need to reshape it to meet the expectations of different data mining algorithms. So these uh, discrete attributes are those that describe the category uh, called nominal attributes. Those attributes that describe the category that uh, where there is a meaning in order for categorizing all are called ordinal attributes. The process of converting a real value attributes into the ordinal attributes is called as discrete, discrete discretation. This is very important thing because as I said, there are some prerequisites for in many data mining algorithms. In order to make the prerequisites, that we are in a position to convert these real value attributes to the ordinal attributes, and those conversion will can be taken place by this filtering techniques. So, if I want to uh, apply this filtering technique, I have to select the choose button over the uh, filter sector there. And if I select the uh, uh, choose button, then this uh, uh, this menu will be popped out. In among the menu, you have to just click this attribute. And if you click this attribute, there will be many uh, uh, pre-processing data pre-processing method will be there. You have to appropriately choose the particular uh, particular uh, uh, filter attributes. We are choosing this uh, discrete eyes. And uh, once this uh, discrete has been chosen, you have to now apply it. So in applying part, uh, there are many parameters. It contains attribute indices, uh, bins, uh, find uh, bin uh, pins, invert selection, uh, make binary, use uh, equal frequency. So whichever parameter you like to work on, you have to you can you can able to change uh, this uh, the parameters. And uh, suppose I want to change this uh, use equal frequency from false to true, I can able to change that from false to true and I can just give OK and apply. I will just give OK and I can just apply. There Now if you see this uh, petal length uh, values has been uh, discretized and uh, if we apply that, see here, the petal length value has been entirely discretized. Now it is ready for, uh, if I suppose you want to do is, uh, there, this, uh, uh decision tree then you can uh, easily apply that okay so you can also filter this uh, values by applying any of the appropriate uh, filter techniques 
Next, uh, we are going to see how we can use this uh, classifier in this uh, vehicle call tool. So classify in week are models for predicting nominal or numeric quantities. So for example, uh, we can uh, this classifies implemented learning mechanism includes, we have decision tree, and we have uh, support vector machine, multiple AI plus patrons, logical regressions, ambition network, et cetera. So in this, we are going to see uh, how we can apply that to the decision trees. So for that, uh, I have given uh, taken a sample example. So uh, sample training data set, which contains a uh, which, which data which is the data set which deals with whether uh, a person can buy the computer or not with uh, the attributes age, income, and uh, student and credit rating. So based on these attributes, uh, we can we're going to construct a decision tree which will say whether a person can buy a computer or not based on these attributes. So this is the data set, and this is the training data set which has been used to construct the decision tree. Again, again, we can go to see how this decision tree can be constructed with the help of this VCO tool. So if you see, uh, if you construct this uh, decision tree manually, uh, this is how the decision tree output will look like. So it will just check the age, age as a root node it will take, and it will just check whether the age of the person is between uh, 31 to 40, or it is less than 30, or it is greater than 40. And if it is less than 30, it will uh, ask whether uh, uh, less than 30 is a student. If he's a student, then it will recommend that he has to buy the computer. And if he's between 31 to 40, directly it will say, yes, you can buy a computer. Or if uh, it is greater than 40, it will just ask for a query, how is your credit rating? If a credit rating is uh, excellent, it will say no, and credit rating is fair, it will say yes. So this uh, decision tree will help uh, to decide on a particular problem, and I have taken this data set, especially to buy a computer or not, and this VCA tool has been applied uh, on this uh, data set to uh, construct the decision tree. This is the decision tree you can construct manually, but now we are going to use this VCA tool to construct a decision tree. So. So again, as I said, uh, for the test options to construct this uh, decision tree, you can uh, use this uh, cross-validation tools. You all know what is cross-validation, having being experts in this uh, data mining. And always, you can also split uh, how many number of percentage should go for uh, uh, the um, training data set. So I, normally, it should be 66. I've given the default one. So here, uh, the decision tree, which uh, this is going to use nothing but the decision tree J48. It's the implementation of algorithm ID3 and developed by Vika project team. Again, J48 is nothing but again a decision tree algorithm. So, so I just click on this classifier, and uh, in the classifier, uh, if you check, there are many different classifiers like Bayes, Function, Lazy, Meta, Miscellaneous, Trees. In the trees, I'm going to just choose this J48 decision tree algorithm. I would just select which algorithm I want to choose. So everything is there and we can only thing is that you have to know which algorithm to be used for which data set. So I'm now going to use this J48 for my decision tree construction. So once I have uh, chosen this uh, classifier, it will be listed here which classifier have been chosen for the data. Again, it contains various number of parameters. Again, as I said, uh, it will ask for uh, the attributes for this uh, decision tree. What is the confidence factor? Minimum number of objects, number of folds, uh, reduced error burning, and uh, subtree rising, unpooned, use Laplace. Many of the parameters, whichever parameter you like to use, you can just uh, modify those parameter, and you can fine tune the parameter. And after fine tuning, if you click OK, those parameters will be taken for construction of the decision tree. And uh, as I said, uh, the uh, percentage split is there. So it will give how many number of uh, percent you'll give for uh, the training, the data for the decision tree. And uh, if you want to have many more options, you can have more options, which will, uh, which will just uh, have a checkbox for output model, or uh, output per class statistics, uh, output entropy evaluation measures, output confusion matrix, store prediction for visualization, which, whichever is required, you can choose that. You can choose and click OK, and uh, you can uh, just start the process. So the entire uh, uh, data set will be act on the classifier, which you have chosen with uh, many different parameters. Once you have uh, started the process, then you can able to see the classifier output. So the classifier output will be there, and the just right-hand side, uh, it will be there. But then uh, if you want to have the view of the decision tree, which is being constructed, you can click uh, the tree uh, J48. You can right-click that. And uh, if you want to right click, if you click this, uh, uh, see, it will give the timing at which the tree has been generated and it will give trees for J48. Right click that, and uh, there will be a menu popped up in which it will contain the visualized tree. So if you click this visualized tree, you can be able to see this decision tree. Okay, see, now your decision tree has been uh, created for uh, this Irish data set. Okay. 
so it says uh, based on the petal width uh, it takes the petal width as the root node based on the petal width uh, and the values uh, it just uh, classify which class of uh, this iris is belongs to so if the petal width is uh, less than or equal to 0.6 it is nothing but iris setosa if it is uh, greater than 0.6 then it will compare again the petal width whether it is less than or equal to 1.7 or greater than or 1.7 if it is uh, less than or equal to 1.7 again the petal length is being compared even the, if the petal length is less than or equal to 4.9 then you can conclude the particular data belongs to the iris versicolor if the petal length is greater than 4.9 again we have to compare with petal width and the petal width if it is greater than 1.5 again you can conclude that the particular data is belongs to iris versicolor so this is how we can construct a nice uh, decision tree with the help of this vcor tool in just a matter of time of course all that all that this decision tree which, which has been projected that has been given uh, in uh, terms of uh, the text on the right hand side Next, uh, we are going to uh, deal with uh, how we can uh, use this VCA tool uh, on uh, mining this associ association rules. So the VCA contains an implementation of uh, appropriate algorithm for learning the association rules. As I said, uh, this works only on the discrete data. So we have a discretion uh, filter mechanism which is available in the VCA. So we can use this uh, filter mechanism to make this uh, data set uh, fine tuning for the particular uh, association rule mining. So the main uh, objective of this uh, association rule mining is that to find the statistical dependencies between the group of attributes. For example, if we have this uh, e-commerce uh, data and I want to find the association between the two products, then uh, that will help us to uh, place these two products together so that the sales will be a little higher. For example, milk and butter and uh, breads and eggs. Uh, so finding these kind of association, how, how these two attributes in e-commerce data uh, goes together. So if we find this association uh, between these uh, attributes in this e-commerce website then that will help us to place these products together and it will in turn it will enhance the sales rate so a priori uh, can compute all the rules that can give the minimum support and exceed given constraints so minimum support and constraints are the technical terms which has been dealt with this association rule mining so association rules are then uh, are if then statements that help us to show the probability of relationship between the data items within the large data set in various type of databases if you take the e-commerce website you might have known that will be large number of columns so in order to find this association of uh, how which are the two columns are related closely to each other so we have to apply some of the rule uh, mining rules so that we can able to uh, get this uh, association uh, attributes together so that will help us to flourish the business so association rule mining has a number of applications and mainly it is used in uh, the commerce website and nowadays slowly it is also uh, dealing with the medical data set in the medical data set if you want to know where association rule is being used it will also check which are the parameters that are closely related if the BP is being raised whether the sugar level uh, rising or they are inversely proportional how close these attributes are how these attributes are contributing for a particular disease so for all these things we can use this association rule mining to get how these attributes are closely related and how these contributing for a particular diseases so this, this is uh, how this association rule mining works. So it contains item set and as I said, support and vector. These are technical terms that have been dealt with association rule mining. So uh, considering the time, I will not deal that in extensively. But um, you can apply this association rule mining, uh, of course, in this VCA, uh, uh, and you can able to see, uh, you can able to figure out uh, what are the parameters is being uh, are closely associated. For example, I have applied uh, this association rule mining on a particular data set, uh, and I can able to see these are the uh, attributes that are closely associated with each other. So we have seen some uh, algorithms, how we can work uh, very uh, nicely in this uh, VCOR tool without having a much coding thing. Only thing is that we have to choose the appropriate options and fine tune the parameters uh, Finding find the parameters uh, for the particular algorithm, and uh, we have also seen how we can able to pre-process the data. So I have just shown a couple of things like a decision tree and next statistical analysis of the data. Now we can construct this uh, association rule mining. Next, uh, we are slowly going into the rapid miner. So we'll see uh, glimpses of uh, what is rapid miner and how and why it has been so popular. So Rapid Miner, uh, if you want to download the Rapid Miner, again, uh, you can go to the website uh, rapid-i.com. Again, it's an open source data mining. Uh, Rapid Miner, uh, like VK, it has been developed on uh, Java. 
So it's a worldwide learning and leading open source data mining solutions. Uh, as I said, uh, because uh, it can also easily uh, interact and it can also easily uh, having an easy compatible uh, interaction with other uh, data mining tools, there is a very unique feature about the data mining, data rapid data miner, which makes it so popular. So if you see the application of data miner, it covers a wide range of uh, real world data mining tasks. So this is how this uh, rapid miner will look like. So I can uh, say, as Vika, we can also be able to read uh, the data from variety of files. If you look into the left hand side, you can see you can read the data from CSV file, Excel file, Microsoft Access, AML, ERFF, XRFF. You can read the data from databases. We can also read the data from Steam databases. It's very unique here. We can read the data from SPSS statistical package. We can able to read the data from Stata. We can able to read the data from Sparse, DBase. We can able to read the data from C 4.5. Even we can able to read the data from WebTex. You know, WebTex is mainly used for uh, uh, the general writing, maybe especially for references. You can able to even read the data from that in using this rapid miner. And uh, of course, we can also able to read the data from the URL. Any given any web, you can also able to read the data. So you can see uh, from which are the different sources we can able to read the data. That's a very unique feature about this rapid miner. It supports large amount of functions from which large amount of files from which you can read the data. And uh, top button is nothing but uh, this is for running. And uh, if you see this uh, rapid manner, it, it will be like more or less uh, like um, uh, Visual Basic GUI. In Visual Basic, whenever you want to have some controls, you'll just drag and put that in the working room. The same thing holds good in the rapid manner. Whenever you want to uh, have uh, any, you want to execute any other function, for example, you want to read uh, some of the things from the Excel file, I have to just select this read Excel and I have to drag that to the main uh, working process. So I will get a diagram, nice diagram like this here. OK, it will be more or less like uh, VB uh, GUI, Visual Basics. So for example, this is the data uh, which I uh, am uh, being loaded uh, in this Excel file. This is the Excel file, which contains these many attributes. So if you want to see what is the Excel file contains, uh, these are the attributes that Excel file con contains ID, age, income, gender, marital, number of kids, number of calls. Uh, what is the, how much you are paid, whether it is weekly or monthly, what is the mortgage you have, whether you have store, car, loans, and risk. So on, like, on immediately loading the data into this rapid manner environment, we can able to have the metadata view. Metadata view about and nothing but data about the data. So immediately you load any data set uh, to this rapid manner, you have a complete statistics about the data which is being loaded. So for example, here you have, uh, I have listed the attributes which is there in the data set and the type column will say, what is the data type of the particular column? Whether it is binomial, whether it is an integer, it will just classify that. If you see the third column, which will give you the statistics of the attribute. This is very, very crucial. You have to know what is the statistics. It says what is the average ID of the employee in the data set, what is the average age. It will also say what is the average income, what is the mood. See, see age, ID, and income are all integer, whereas gender is binomial, with gender varies from male and female. So if we look at the statistics of this general binomial, it says there are 2,077 uh, female and uh, 2,040 uh, male. So you can easily classify uh, this. You can easily find the statistical value of the parameter which is being there in the data set. Similarly, it will also say marital status. Again, it is not an integer, it is a no nominal. So it will say married, uh, single, or diverse. So it says uh, how many number of married people are there, how many number of singles are there, how many number of diverse you are there. This is the quick statistic that you will be able to get when you see when you click this metadata on selecting the particular data set. And uh, if you want to look at quickly, if you want to look at the data view, you can select this data view, which will uh, display uh, exactly how will you look in the data set that the entire thing will be displayed in this rapid miner environment. Suppose I want to uh, see this plot view. This plot view, I just want to uh, compare how these two parameters in the data sets are related. For example, I just want to know how the number of kids and number of calls are related to each other. So what does it do? Then if you want to, if I click the plot view, these are the part, these are the attributes which is listed on the left hand color will be popped out. So I have to select which type of graph I want to draw and uh, which attributes I have to do in the x-axis and which attributes I have to go in the y-axis and uh, the color of the column, which color I just need. So if you select these things, then immediately on the right-hand side, you can able to get a graph uh, on the x-axis number of kids and y-axis number of cards with the plotting. So it says, uh, what is a good risk, what is a bad loss, and what is a bad profit. 
So quickly you can able to see how these two parameters in a, how those two attributes in a data sets are being related. That can be done easily with the help of this plot view. Suppose uh, you want to again uh, want to have a scatter plot between the number of kids and number of cars, but then you want to have the jitter introduced in between. Jitter is nothing but a way by which you can introduce noise in the data. Again, you can able to do that by just adjusting the jitter. So now we're going to see how we can do this k-means clustering using this rapid miner. So this is a sample um, example I have taken. So I have uh, this particular data set which contains the name and uh, the calories uh, of the food items, proteins, fat, calcium, iron. So this label column will be initially hidden. So these are the things which are uh, being uh, given here and just want to club those items. I want to cluster these items which are of or, or equal uh, calories, proteins, factors. I want to club this item which will give enough number of uh, nutrition to the human beings. So on seeing these calories, proteins, flat, calcium, and xion, I will not be able to uh, group this uh, food items. But then I want to group this food, food items based, based on some of the parameters. How we can done with the help of this uh, rapid manner that being discussed here? So, so this is a, a screenshot which shows how we can able to load this uh, CSV file into this rapid manner environment. So I'm just uh, this uh, data set is being loaded and this data set in the, is in the form of CSV file. I'm just loading that now here. On loading this the CSV file, as I said, it will be like a drag and drop method. So uh, this uh, value which is in, from the CSV file need to be normalized. After normalizing, I just want to use this clustering mechanism. I just want to cluster the food items uh, based on uh, based on the category. Which are which food items falls under one one category? Which food food items falls in the other category? I just want to group this. So for this, I am designing this model. This is a model designing part. So see here carefully. I have I'm reading the data set, and this data set is being passed as an input for the normalize, and the output of the normalize is nothing but given as an input for the clustering. And at the end of the clustering, I have three results. Three results means the entire data set has been cl clustered into three different groups. That is what being uh, designed in the process. So this has to be done by the user. So which uh, normalization they have to do, which clustering they have to do, they have to just click this menu GUI graphical interface, and they have to just drop into the process environment. Okay, and this connection has to be provided by the user so that the entire process can work on. Good. So if well, so I have uh, done this, and if I want to execute this, I can just press this execution button over there in the rapid manner, which has been projected previously. If I run this, then I can able to get this result. So see here, it it classifies the entire data set into three clusters. It says cluster zero, cluster one, and cluster two. If you look at the cluster zero, the cluster zero has these common attributes. The color is varies from 0.9, and protein is nothing but minus one, fat is minus uh, 0.7, and calcium is 1.6. And nine is 0.615 on label. Is the, it means that the entire food items which contain these calories, these proteins, these uh, fat, this calcium, and these iron will be grouped into one cluster. Similarly, it will cluster the. It will also cluster uh, one and cluster two. They will all segregate these food items based on these values, and you can able to plot a graph. In the x-axis, you can have calories, proteins, fat, calcium, iron, and uh, you can able to uh, plot against the cluster. See here, uh, zero uh, stands for one cluster, green stands for one cluster, and the red stands for one cluster. Easily, you can do the clustering in a much more efficient way using this rapid miner. And you please look at the right hand side. So, the right hand side, it clearly says what are the food items will cover on, come under the cluster zero. It says raw, it says clams canned, uh, Merkel canned, salmon canned, and starlin canned. So, so, all these food items will come under the cluster zero. It means that all the food items listed in the cluster zero have the same amount of calcium protein files, calcium ion. And uh, if you want to know what are the items uh, which is clubbed under the cluster one, it is nothing but beef canned, chicken broiled, and it varies since to shrimp canned. In cluster two, we have uh, uh, beef roast till to pork cement. So, all these food items are now segregated based on some values. That is done in using the rapid manner and just by selecting appropriate algorithms. So now we have seen two different data mining tools. Uh, one is uh, Vika extensively, another we have seen is nothing but the rapid manner. Now we can go to see how we can, uh, which is the best, which uh, uh, data mining tool is the best, whether it's a Vika or the rapid manner. We're going to discuss that for the next uh, five minutes. We're just coming to the end of the session. Maybe for another uh, uh, five minutes, we'll be concluding it. So 
So what is Vika? We're just going to come back quickly, the Vika and the Rapid Miner. So Vika is nothing but it's an open source data mining uh, application. It contains many data mining libraries, as I said. It is written by Java, and it is uh, the tool uh, which is um, available, and it is a tool which is being authored by this uh, Department of Computer Science, Waikato University. If you see a list of the advantages of the Vika, it has many learning packages, and it has appropriate and suitable graphical user interface. It is specifically used for data mining, and it has a very, very simple self-explanatory workspace. It is suitable even for the text mining, and we can ask uh, ability to run several learning algorithms, and we can also be able to easily compare it. And uh, since this Vika is written in Java, irrespective of the operating system, it is platform independent. It can work on any platform. This is a quick summary about the Vika. And if you look at the rapid miner, why rapid miner? What is the advantage of the rapid miner? What are the special features in the rapid miner? So these are the things. It is compatible with different operating systems. So this rapid miner is compatible with Linux, Windows, and Mac. That is all because it is being written in Java. And uh, even in rapid miner, you can find a tool to do this text mining. So at all of the Vika learning algorithms. So we have all the algorithms which is la which is there in the Vika tool. And I, we, even we have some of the enhanced algorithms, data mining algorithms, which is also available in the right, rapid manner. One more uh, specific point, which I forgot to list out here, is that this rapid manner can easily interact with other data mining tools, which makes this more sophisticated. If we quickly compare the similarity and the differences between the rapid manner and the Vika, uh, both are uh, written by Java. So it's a platform independent tool. And uh, both are uh, published under uh, uh, GPL license. And uh, Rapid Miner uh, approaches many weak algorithms in one workspace. These are some of the similarities. If you want to compare the difference between the Rapid Miner and the Vika, so poor performance in connecting to the files containing Excel data and the database orient of Java base. And uh, reading CSV file in Vika is not uh, that good as in Rapid Miner. So if you read this CSV file in Vika, then if you, you can carefully note uh, the data is not uh, organized properly. And uh, if you compare, the Rapid Miner has a better graphical uh, user interface than the Vika. So these are uh, some of the differences and similarities between the Rapid Miner and the Vika. So if you see, and if you ask me among these tools, which tool you will prefer, I will always go with the, the data miner tool uh, when you with the arrays. And I can say the Rapid Miner always have an overage than the Vika. And uh, we'll see. I, I discussed some of the features uh, of uh, Rapid Miner, which is preferred over Vika in a session. We'll see uh, why it is being preferred. So because uh, data, data miner. Uh, Data mining tool is being preferred. Rapid miner data mining tool is preferred because of its analytical processing design. So it is, uh, it has more than uh, fifty thousand downloads uh, since two thousand one, and uh, it is uh, the, it got the first place in IT Challenger Zero uh, for Open Source Business Award, and um, more users than uh, KD Nuggets Challenge, and it is a place in the fourth uh, time in the two thousand eleven. So it has a very good and uh, processing uh, analytical processing designs that makes it so popular. These are some of the factors which user prefer rapid miner than uh, other data mining tools. And the second thing is that uh, performance and flexibility. It's another advantage of rapid miner. It quick fixes. There is an error being quickly fixed. And uh, we have a metadata transmi trans transformation. I have just shown how the metadata are being done in the rapid miner. And you can also execute the code with the help of the breakpoint. And uh, data miner has more than 500 operators like data processing, modeling, text mining, web mining, opinion mining, and so on. We have n, as I said, 500 operators. And it has been listed many ways. Rapid Miner has 20 ways by which you can able to visualize the data. Next advantage why Rapid Mining uh, is being preferred is nothing but scalability. It uh, It's like creation database, and uh, you can uh, able to scale this uh, Rapid Miner on the fly. And uh, it is uh, famous for churn reduction, customer retention, and data flows. As I said, uh, the data from which you can read the input from uh, the, the source from which you can read uh, in the data mining, in the rapid miner, you can read it from Oracle, DB2, Server, SQL, Access, Access, SPSS, and many more things. So these are the things which uh, uh, makes this rapid miner very, very popular. So now we have come to an end of the session. I think uh, it's 12.5. Uh, and uh, so this uh, presentation in this webinar, we have uh, listed out what is data mining, what is the flow of the data mining, and we have listed the top five data mining tools that are being used by the researchers. And among the top five, we have uh, discussed extensively on the Vika and the Rapid Miner. 
and uh, we also seen uh, how this week on rapid miner being worked on some other data mining algorithms and uh, we also had a quick comparison about this uh, week on rapid miner and uh, we also concluded which is much preferred by the researcher and we have also seen reason why rapid miner is being preferred a uh, best data mining tool for the research and uh, this is a quick summary and uh, now the session is uh, open for the questions these are some of the uh, references which we have uh, gone through for my presentation and if you have any questions uh, i will be very happy to answer that now the session is open for question and answer please thank you sir for sharing your knowledgeable presentation now it's time for question and answer i will list out the questions posted by the participants in the chat box apart from data mining what other area of research does vega support so data mining and machine learning as i said data mining and machine learning goes hands in hands i think you can only use for, for data mining the machine learning apart from that it, it, it is not uh, intended for any other research area okay so uh, when complex platform that combines with data mining iot cloud is used which tool is suitable iot cloud see uh why we need is iot uh, iot we need only when you need much data okay so this iot is mainly uh, seen as a platform by which you can generate the data okay once the data has been generated by the iot uh, we need a huge number of storage because uh, per second uh, now we are living in the world uh, uh, where per second we have millions of data being generated so to store these millions of data which is generated per second definitely we need a storage medium and uh, as a organization or as an industry uh, no one is afford to have that huge storage to store the data which is generated by this iot devices for uh, that we will go to this cloud okay so uh, if you want to link between these two uh, definitely uh, this iot will generate the data and the data generated by the iot will be stored in the cloud and easily this uh, data mining tools can able to read uh, the data which is there being stored in the cloud so uh, i think i think i have uh, I've given you a relationship between this iot cloud and this uh, data mining tool yes sir. yes sir next question what suggestions you give you can give for the researchers to utilize vega or any specific tool for their research implementation so as i said i have clearly shown a comparison between the week and rapid miner at the end of my session so always uh, it is uh, good uh, to use this rapid miner because of uh, the sophistication so much of luxury it provides for the data analyst and for the machine learning expert so if you ask me uh, it depends on the research and still if you are working on this data mining you can always use this rapid mining because of the features it supported Yes, sir. Next question: Does it give any analysis support to improvise the output of the test data so as to increase the quality of the output? Definitely, you can fine tune the parameters for this data mining algorithm. Um, based based on the fine tuning the parameters, you can enhance the result. That option is there actually. Okay, sir. Next question: Whether we can import image data for processing into Vega, and how to create attributes in that? image data i think as such there is no any facility to import the image data set into the vika we don't have that option okay sir thank you very much for your detailed answer now i would like to invite mrs revathi assistant professor faculty of computer applications to deliver the vote of thanks revathi ma'am your uh, mic is in mute Uh, thank you, Nitya ma'am. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to all. I myself, Revathi, uh, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Computing, Dr. M J R Education and Research Institute. It gives me an immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks on this special occasion on behalf of our department, Faculty of Computer App Applications. I wish to express my sincere gratitude to our honourable founder, Dr. A C Shanmugam sir. President, respected engineer ACS Arun Kumar sir, registrars, deans, HODs, and other staff members. And now I would I would like to deliver my special guest, Dr. Tyagarajan, who accepted our greetings and spent his valuable time with us by sharing his powerful knowledge and effective presentation on use of top five data mining tools like Vika tools, Rapid Miner, and other difference between the 
tools. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It is my privilege to thank our de department, Dean Dr. S. Ramam, sir, HOD, Dr. Vijay Vinodman, additional HODs, and my dear staff members for their extended continuous encouragement and support. I, I mentioned a special thanks to the organizers and technical team of this faculty development program for their continuous support. And last but not the least, finally, I thank all active participants of today's program for making it a grand success. Once again, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. If your actions inspire us to dream more, learn more, do more, and achieve more, you are the best leader. This is the exact code which suits to our head of the department, Dr. Vijay Vinod, who plays an important role to execute this event in a successful manner. I request head of the department to deliver the validatory note for this entire faculty development program. Ma'am, HOD, ma'am. Are you able to see the screen? I am not able to see no, the screen. No. I will... Video is not okay? there, ma'am. Video is not there. Video is not there, ma'am. Oh, okay. Only audio. Okay, okay. Okay, ma'am. Only audio is okay. there. Okay. So, uh, a very good morning and ha happy to meet you all. And this is the end Just of the video. five days. Ma'am, video, ma'am. Video, ma'am. Oh, so, uh, no, you, you have kept it off? No, ma'am. No, no ma'am. Ma so why uh, I think oh, one second. Okay, ma'am. Is it coming? Mm -hmm. No, ma'am. It's not coming. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. It's not coming. Start camera, ma'am. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's stuck. Oh. So you you can't uh, no I thought no, no, you initially it was there I then I I thought you you are the one who uh, did no, not no, no no oh so it automatically no, 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 no. yes ma'am so what to do now oh. which camera is there ma'am on your uh, it's uh, I know but it is stuck I don't know I so we will. Uh, what should I do? I leave the studio and enter no, again? Just, or? just continue, ma'am. Just continue. Okay. okay, I will. Rather than coming again, no, I'll continue, mm -hmm. no? Yes, ma'am. Start camera. Continue. It's stuck, no? The screen, I'm not able to press any of the buttons out here. No, it is. Okay. okay. You can carry on, ma'am. You can carry on. Okay. A uh, very good morning and happy to meet you all. Or uh, should I uh, go out and come inside? It'll, it'll lag okay, the show. Okay, okay. Huh? You can do like that also, ma'am. That is also not possible. The entire screen is stuck. Yeah, ma'am, you can leave the... Oh. Okay. Uh, it is visible. Uh, now it's all no. okay, ma'am. You can continue. Okay. Yes. So, uh, uh, good morning, a very good morning and happy to meet you all. And this is the end of the five days uh, International FDP on Value Addition to Information Technologies. On behalf of the Faculty of Computer Applications, I wish to show our gratitude to all the speakers who has inputted valuable contribution in terms of knowledge in the academic community. Uh, the, and uh, I hope uh, Dr. P. Tyagarajan is already with us and we are very happy with his uh, uh, session on uh, Vika and uh, Rapid Minor Tools. It was really uh, great knowledge sharing. The public views have crossed more than 2,000 is what uh, I have understood. And uh, the first day was Dr. Geeta Achutan from National University, Oman, and Dr. Yes Mohan Gandhi from IBM USA, Dr. Tirumurgan College of Applied Sciences, Oman, and Mr. Mani Kandin, uh, he is an IT expert from Hyderabad and Dr. Ram Murthy, uh, he is a Dean of Computer Applications and Dr. P. Tyagarajan, he is from the Central University of Tamil Nadu. And uh, I wish to congratulate and appreciate my entire team of uh, the Computer Applications Department, my colleagues who have done wonderful job on live streaming the entire show to the public. The highlight was that most of the department members who showed their face on their live 
and uh, they supported and participated well a good team effort and a good support is always an asset to my any leader to achieve the department and organization goals i especially thank and indebted to you all for that in this juncture i wish to wholeheartedly appreciate the event organizers for their efficient planning in spite of enormous challenges i remember in the second day uh, there were lots of network issues uh um, no but uh, uh, in spite of all those uh, they have faced in the network they managed to overcome those instantly and that's only because of the brilliant coordination among the organizers on behalf of the ca team we appreciate dr radha ramohan dr murali and others for inviting excellent international speakers and uh, i would like to specially note give a note of for uh, miss uh, vaidehi ma'am nitya ma'am and jayshri ma'am in the next stage of the streaming which is the most important task if not the session to be done smoothly i strongly appreciate you all the department wish to thank our overwhelming participants who showed lot of enthusiasm and joined us for the event i thank you one and all thanks for being with us for the session thanks a lot thank you ma'am unity is strength where there is a teamwork and collaboration wonderful things can be achieved easily a big thank you to our department staff members who extended their support and cooperation till the end a special thanks to all participants who have given their interest and support throughout the session on behalf of organizing team we extend whole hearted thanks to one and all myself nitya mrs vairegi and entire organizing team signing off and we'll catch you in another event shortly thank you